October. Dear Danny, you won't believe what happened in Freaky this month. I mean, it's strange enough here at the best of times, but throw Halloween into the mix and this place is off the scale. Freaky has an annual pumpkin competition to see who can grow the biggest one. Susie, who lives over the road from it, number eight, well, her mum and dad grow massive pumpkins and enter every year. They're easily the best in town. The trouble is, they just can't agree on how to grow the best and biggest pumpkin. Mr Prune thinks you need to plant them in a bucket and water them with a watering can. Mrs Prune thinks they grow bigger if you plant them in the greenhouse and use a spray bottle to water them. Neither of them will budge on their pumpkin growing plans, so they now enter the pumpkin competition separately, which means each year only one of them gets to win the trophy. Susie said that this year her dad was feeling super confident about his pumpkin. Apparently, he's got something pretty special up his sleeve. The trouble is, Susie's mum said that she has something pretty special up her sleeve this year too. It's Susie I feel sorry for, because her mum and dad spend more time with their precious pumpkins than they do with their daughter. To make things even worse, over the past few weeks, both of them have been so obsessed with watering, pruning, trimming and whatever else you do with pumpkins to make them grow, that neither Mr or Mrs Prune remembers Susie's birthday. The pumpkin competition was held on Halloween night. I went trick-or-treating first with Dad before the meeting, the meeting the gang at Freaky Square. Everyone had awesome Halloween costumes. Everyone except me. Dad, as usual, forgot that it was his job to get my Halloween costume ready. So five minutes before we left the house, he fashioned this costume together with things he found in the kitchen. Spatula, red tea towel, another spatula, another spatula, count spatula. I know what you're thinking. Why do my parents need three spatulas? And I'm afraid I don't have an answer to that. Needless to say, I removed the costume the first chance I got and found the rest of the danger gang near the front of the crowd that had gathered in Freaky Square. Nice costumes, I said as Molly made her entire head disappear, terrifying a group of three, year three kids. Jamelia came as the freaky fray bug, complete with glowing green eyes, swimming goggles with the glow in the dark paint. Katie showed up as the mermaid from Freaky Falls in a wire green wig and homemade tail. Eric had a cardboard shark head, so no one would notice the difference if it rained and he turned into an actual shark. Charlie came covered in rubbish and said he was a creaker. And everyone thought Ronnie's Frankenstein mask was super elastic until they realised he wasn't actually wearing a mask. OK, that's probably a bit mean. Frankenstein's monster is way better looking than Ronnie Nutbug. Where's Susie? I asked, realising she was the only one of our danger gang missing, but no one had seen her. When it was time for the pumpkin unveiling, three very important looking officials came out and introduced themselves to the judging panel. Piers Snorgum, off the telly, was there, reporting with his film crew, so I'm one step closer to being rich and famous. I slipped away from the gang to look for Susie and found her hiding round the back of the stage. Hey, they're about to start judging, I said. Great, she said with a sigh, and then took a huge bite out of a huge slice of pumpkin pie. What's up? I asked. I'm just bored of watching mum and dad try to outdo each other with stupid orange delicious pumpkins, she said, taking another gulp of stupid orange delicious delicious pumpkin pie. Want some? she asked. I shook my head. No thanks, I'm stuffed. Mum bought a box of 12 donuts for trick-or-treaters and I accidentally ate seven when she wasn't looking. But I guess one of your parents is about to win the big trophy. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's awesome for one of them, but that means the other one's going to lose, she said. Oh yeah, that sucks, I realised, as Susie gobbled another mouthful of pumpkin pie. I slowed down if I were you, or you'll turn into a pumpkin, I joked as she scoffed the pie. Well, at least mum and dad might notice me then, she laughed and finished off the gooey orange slice of pie before we both headed back to the unveiling. There were seven entries in total, including Miss Tinky and the man who sells me nutter crunches from his ice cream van, but it was clear to everyone that only two people stood a chance of winning. First up was Susie's mum's pumpkin. It was so big it had to be carried out on a forklift truck. The freaky crowd burst into applause. All the judges were scribbling notes on their clipboards, nodding their heads, and Mrs Prune was beaming. Piers Snorgan announced, In my opinion, this has to be the winning pumpkin because this has to be the biggest pumpkin in the world. In fact, unless anyone can prove that pumpkins grow on other planets, this has to be the biggest pumpkin in the universe. But as usual, his opinion turned out to be utter rubbish. 
the ground started to rumble and searchlights suddenly lit up the dusky sky and found something enormous, something round, something orange, flying through the air, being hoisted in by a giant crane over the rooftops and trees. Susie sighed. Here comes my dad's pumpkin. And we all looked up in amazement. Freaky went nuts. Everyone threw their trick-or-treat bags into the air in celebration as a second gigantic pumpkin was lowered into place next to Miss Prune's entry. Mr Prune was looking very smug and avoiding his wife's glare. Piers Snorgan ran over to get an exclusive interview with the Prunes. Mr Prune, how on earth did you manage to grow a pumpkin this big? What's your secret? Piers asked. Well, I planted it a little earlier than usual this year, back in March, on the night of that big storm, Mr Prune answered. And what about you, Mrs Prune? demanded Pierce. So did I, she replied. The moment I heard that, my heart stopped. Storm? If that storm had anything to do with these pumpkins, then we were in for something freaky. Well, I think for the first year ever, we have a tie, said Pierce Snorgan, looking at the two equally enormous pumpkins. You are joint winners and can share the Freaky Pumpkin Competition trophy. Hold on just a tick, screeched Mrs Prune. My pumpkin is clearly the biggest. Don't be daft, Mr Prune added. Your silly little pumpkin is nowhere near as big as mine. Then Mrs Prune reached into her gardening utility belt and unclipped a bottle of spray, which I could see was full up with murky green liquid labelled rainwater. What the... Mr Prune asked. This is water I collected from the storm on the night my pumpkin was planted, said Mrs Prune. And what are you going to do with that? Mr Prune asked, sounding a little nervous. I don't think mine has finished growing yet, Mrs Prune screeched. And with that she went to spray her pumpkin with the freaky storm water. Oh no you don't, that's cheating, cried Mr Prune, and he lunged for the bottle. He tugged it this way and pulled his wife that way, this way, that way, it was a tug of war. I can't watch this. Susie said miserably, and she took a large bite from another piece of pumpkin pie. At that very moment, the spray bottle full of freaky storm water couldn't take being pulled any longer. It snapped open and pinged out of Susie's mum and dad's hands. It flew through the air, soaking poor Susie with the murky water inside. Susie gasped as water dripped from her hair and her clothes. I could tell this was the final straw. That's enough, she screamed. I've had it with you two in this stupid competition. As Susie shouted, I couldn't help but notice the green sparks like little tiny bolts of lightning that zapped round her body. And I whispered to myself, it's danger time. And I was right. You spend so much time watching your silly little pumpkins grow that you didn't even notice that I grew. A whole year, Susie went on. Oh, Susie Pie, your birthday, Mrs Prune gasped. You forgot her birthday, asked Mr Prune, looking at his wife in horror. You did, Dad, too bellowed Susie. Did I? he said. But while Susie's mum and dad had failed to remember her growing another year older, I had definitely not failed to notice that she seemed to be growing now, right before our very eyes. Yes, you read that correctly, Susie, was growing. Susie, you're getting bigger, Ronnie shouted. And your skin is turning orange, added Katie. And it was. Susie wasn't just plumping up like someone was inflating her with a bike pump. She was actually turning orange, bigger and bigger, rounder and rounder, until she was as big as her mum and dad's prize-winning pumpkin, and the same colour too. My Susie Pie, Mr Prune Prune cried. You're a, you're a, a pumpkin, her mum screamed at Susie's round orange face, poking out the top of an even rounder, more orange body. The whole town started screaming and running for their lives. Pumpkin monster, they cried. Kill a super squash. They yelled. Susie, the now giant pumpkin, lifted up one of her ginormous pumpkin feet and took a stomping pumpkin step forward. Boom! The ground shook. It was like watching one of those old films where Godzilla fights that awesome giant monster in the middle of the city. If Godzilla had to fight pumpkin Susie, I'm not sure who would win. Susie Pie, we can fix you! Mr Poon cried. Yes! Your dad is brilliant at making pumpkins small, Mrs Prune cried. Oi, well you are, she replied. Stop arguing about pumpkins, Susie bellowed, 
and with that she lifted up her heavy orange foot and brought it crashing down on top of her mum's prize-worthy pumpkin. Splat! The pumpkin was pulverised and chunks of orange flesh splattered over the watching chaotic crowd. <laughs> Mr Croon cackled at the sight. Looks like the trophy is all mine this year. But giant pumpkin Susie had different plans. She lifted up her other round orange foot and smashed her dad's pumpkin to bits. Smash! Now I'm not sure exactly how what happened next happened, but the moment those pumpkins were smashed open, it was almost as if a spell had been broken. Just like when a hypnotist snaps his fingers and wakes someone up who's been prancing around like a chicken the moment before. Mr and Mrs Prune instantly changed. Oh, my Susie Pie, said Mrs Prune. My little, I mean, big girl, sobbed Mr Prune. They both wrapped their arms around their little big pumpkin girl's legs and cried and cried and cried. And as their teardrops trickled down their cheeks and onto the orange flesh of their pumpkin girl, some sort of magic transformation began. Instead of watering a plant to make it grow, their tears were making Susie shrink. Down, down, down she went, getting smaller and smaller and less orange and orange, until Susie was Susie again. Oh, Susie Pie, Mr and Mrs Prune cheered. Susie was back, but now he had another problem, a bigger problem. Everyone in Freaky had just seen giant pumpkin Susie stomping around town like a monster from one of those old B-movies. There was no way we were going to be able to keep this a secret within the Danger Gang. And not only that, Piers Snorgan and his TV crew were there. This was going to go viral. She's done for, Charlie whispered as the Danger Gang reconvened. She'll be taken away for all sorts of scientific testing for sure, said Molly. Or locked up for being a danger to society, added Ronnie. As Piers Snorgan and the crew rushed over to her, we all thought this might be the last we'd ever see of our friend Susie Prune. But Piers suddenly burst into hysterical laughter, clapping and cheering wildly. Young lady, that was the best Halloween costume I have ever seen, he roared. I don't know how on earth you made it, but what a treat it was. Or was it a trick? Ha 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 ha. The stunned crowd, who had been screaming in terror moments before, suddenly erupted into applause. I looked at the danger gang and we all just joined in cheering. Whoopee, what a costume, he cried. Looked fake to me, Ronnie heckled. Yeah, you could see that zip, Eric laughed. Don't believe it for a second, Katie yelled. I think everyone here can safely say that you, Susie Prune, were the biggest pumpkin anyone has ever seen, Pierce Snorgan chuckled as he joined the first place rosette on her jumper. And there's no way a Halloween costume like that was made without the help of mum and dad. So I suppose we have joint winners of this year's Freaky Pumpkin Prize are Mr and Mrs Prune. I felt the danger gang breathe a sigh of relief and we said nothing else about it until, until we were safely within the wooden walls of my treehouse later that evening. So that was my freaky Halloween. But to be honest, I expected nothing less. Happy trek or treating, Frankie. P.S. Here's some photographic evidence. Take a look at the picture of Mr and Mrs Prune with their winning entry Susie. Notice anything unusual? Count the people, then count the shadows. Someone else was there.